Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to create your very own random number generator. And this will be a good little project for us to learn about integers and strings and review everything that we've learned. So we'll go to File, New, Project, Visual C Sharp, Windows Classic Desktop, Windows Form Application. We'll name it Random Generator. We'll click OK. And we have our form. Let's go ahead and drag out our controls. So we'll have a button. Let's name that button Generator Button. And let's change the text to Get a Number. Let's resize it. Let's resize our window. Or if you want to get technical, our form. All right. And let's get a label. All right. Very well. Let's change the text to 10. That'll give us an idea of where our number will be displayed. Let's center it. And let's name it output label. Okay. Let's rename our actual form. So we'll click on the form. On the right hand side, we'll go to name, random number generator. Oops. Doesn't like the spaces. So that's the actual name. So I was making a mistake. I thought I was updating the text property. This is just the name. So we'll do uh, main window. Yep. And the actual text will be random number generator. There we go. And let's make this label. Let's change the font size. Let's do something different. Let's do a 20. Let's make it even bigger. Let's do 48. Very well. Center it. Let's save it. And let's click start. Everything's looking great now. I do want to pinpoint out, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it rendered in the upper left hand side. Well, let's start looking at our properties. Our form selected. And on the right hand side, there is a property called start position. You can see that it says Windows default location. If we click on the drop down menu, we have some options. There's a center screen. I'm going to click on that. Let's click start. And now the application has been rendered and loaded on the center of the screen. It's looking pretty good. Another thing I want to emphasize, guys, is Anything that you guys see in the properties window can be changed in code and you actually want to get used to doing that because a lot of times some of the changes that will uh, need to occur in controls and forms will be based on user input and you won't have this menu to change things or set them up. So um, let's go ahead and go back down to the form. And there should be a start position property. Let's put it back to Windows default location and let's do it in code. So whenever we double click on the button, we generate a click event. Well, if we go back to our form, our form is not a button, but if we double click on it, it has a load event. Well, what's the load event? Load event is any time that the window is actually loading and being rendered onto the screen. So any piece of uh, code block that will be executed at this time will be executed uh, during the time the window is being loaded. So let's type this dot and the property is going to be text equals random. Oh, you know what? We're not even I mean, we can do that, but we're actually doing this dot uh, what was the property and you can use this to reference things so start position so let's do dot start position equals 
And as soon as I hit an equal space, um, IntelliSense um, knows that I'm looking to change that. So it's starting to give me some options. Form start position. Yep, that's what I want. We're going to select that and then put dot and then center screen. Okay. So instead of doing it through the user or the GUI, the graphical user interface and the properties window, we're going to do it via code. Okay. So when this window loads, it'll execute this piece of code and the window should load in the middle of the screen. So let's take a look. It didn't do it. Well, you know what? That's because that piece of code is actually happening. So as the window is loading, it's probably already generating the window in its default location. Yep. So let's see this. And I'll cover more on constructors in future videos. But it's, instead of changing this property when the window actually loads, we'll change it when it is being constructed. Okay. So let's move this over to the top. And see, here we have our class. Okay. And our class name is main window and it's inheriting from the uh, form object or the form class. Um, so then we have our main window, which this is our constructor. Okay. When the window gets initialized, it'll initialize its components. And then um, I've added, I've added a line of code to uh, change the start position. So let's give it a go. There we go. So the other one was a little too late. I wasn't, I didn't think that one through. So now that we changed that, let's go back and yep, we already got a double click here. And what we want to do is every time we click the button, we want to generate a random uh, number. So we're going to go ahead and type random and then generator equals new random. Okay. So what we're doing is we're creating a new random object. So this is the random object. This is the name. And here we're initializing it. Okay. So we want to store our random number in a variable. We'll call it um, new number equals generator dot next. And we're going to type two parameters. Okay. Uh, number, the, no, uh, the first one's going to be just a minimum number. So it'll be from one to 100. Let's do 10 for now. Okay. And then we want to update our output label. We want to update text equals new number. Let's click start and we get an error. Now the reason why we get an error is because new number is an integer and you have to remember dot text that property is only uh, it's only for strings okay so its data type is string okay so how do we convert an integer to a string well we just type dot to string we use the two string method. Okay. And what will end up happening is if I were to have an integer that had a value of five, well, it, I can technically create a string variable number equals five. And that's pretty much what it's being converted into the actual character or text five. It's not a number anymore. So let's go ahead and update the output label. We'll hit the start button. Let's get a number. And there we go. We got a seven. Let's do it again. We got a nine, a one, a two.
And you notice that we never get a 10. And there's a reason for that. We never get a 10. Well, that's because in programming, we always start with zero. We always count with zero. Zero is an actual number, okay? So it goes like this, zero, one, oops, let me go ahead and put comments. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, the first parameter is the minimum value. The second parameter is the maximum value, but not as in the number itself, but the number of the index, the number of uh, uh, the tenth number. So it's not the actual number 10, but the tenth number counting from zero. So if we count from zero, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So the tenth number is nine. Okay? So we start at one, and the maximum value is the tenth number. I know it's confusing, but just remember, the first minimum value is the actual number that you want to start off with, and then the second the second uh, parameter is like if I were to say then you know the maximum value is nine then the maximum number that I'd be that would be generated would be uh, the ninth number counting from zero so it'd be one two three four five six seven eight and nine because we're counting from zero the maximum value is 8 so we would always get an 8 um, I'm sorry we would never get a 9 okay so we have some errors here that's because of this I think let's do a new number generator next oh yeah it's because of this okay so let's give it a try So we should never get a nine and we won't so rule of thumb if you want if you want your random gener uh, I'm sorry random number generator to go from 1 to 100 just do 1 to 101 let's give it another try there you go if you guys like this video and if you guys are actually learning, uh, feel free to comment on the video, subscribe on the video, hit the notification button, and feel free to let me know what you guys want to learn. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do a mixture of uh, fun little projects, but also trying to teach you guys how the actual language works. So we covered strings and integers, and we've actually converted, converted an integer into a string. Um, I'm going to be looking into how to incorporate more data type uh learning into um, projects and uh like i said hit the subscribe button and thank you so much